Good evening students, myself Shomrat Paul. Now I am going to present a topic on sinusoidal pulse width modulation. It is a very important topic. And the short name which is defined by that is S P W M means sinusoidal pulse width modulation. Here we are using the reference signal that is sinusoidal wave. Okay, and we have taken the carrier signal just like our previous classes which I had mentioned before that is carrier that is a carrier signal is suppose triangular repetitive triangular signals same thing can happen so first go to the waveform okay see this is the waveform for the appropriate triggering pulse which has to be applied for the purpose of sinusoidal pulse width modulation okay it's a very interesting part and why it is useful for industry application this means that by using the appropriate triggering pulse applying the sinusoidal pulse width modulation the output voltage of the inverter that is controlled in uh, means that is regulated output voltage that is why it is able to control the output voltage or the voltage control as well as as in this case we are using repetitive signal or triangular carrier signal that is why for each half cycle number of peaks are so many times that is why easily it can remove the unwanted harmonic and reduces the harmonics as well as it is very important to implement for the industry purpose to improve power factor that is why this is the several merits for using this control strategy for maintaining the appropriate gate pulse to the all switches okay see here we are using two signals right one is rectangular shaped carrier signal okay and the different one that is reference signal which is mentioned here that is reference signal and the carrier signal is rectangular shaped repetitive signal sorry triangular shaped repetitive signal means this is the uh, triangular shaped carrier signal repetitive in nature okay and which is bipolar means it has the it is it is having the uh, positive half and the negative half and in case of reference signal we are using suppose this signal is the sine signal which is defined by vm sin omega t and this is phase shifted 120 degree this is called vm sin omega t minus 120 degree that means we can apply here that is a two sinusoidal waveform and opposite in nature and we have taken the complete cycle 0 to 2 pi okay this one and as we know in case of pulse switch modulation the gate pulse that should be applied to the appropriate switch for inverter operation that is G1 and G4 as G1 and G4 they are connected in series for inverter operation that is why we never can apply the appropriate gate pulse to these respective switches at any instant as it will provide the short circuit path to avoid it obviously the G1 should be applicable for the positive half for inverter operation and suppose G4 should be applicable for the negative half of the inverter operation that is why we have taken the two sinusoidal signal in the forward direction and in the negative direction in or in opposite direction and we know the this pulse have that that these pulses that have to be generated by the coincide point of the two signals right in this way or this way it again the signal will be coincide where the signal will be coincide it is the through which we can get the appropriate gauge signal okay now consider so from this uh, waveform see it is very clearful to us in the first case where we have taken this negative this forward signal first this means this this signal first this sign signal first and first i'm going to find out where they are coincide to the carrier signal means this point again these two point 
this two point and this two point. That is why we have taken the pulse from this one to this one as this is the first point coincide and this is the second coincide point. Okay. Similarly, again this point and this point that is why it will provide these peaks. Right. Again, so, uh, okay. Similarly, for the next case, again, the these two points are coincide by each other. Right. Okay. That is why this is the starting point is this one and the ending point is this one. Again, this peaks has generated. Again, this point and the next is this point. That is why this peaks. Similarly, again, the starting point of the coincide that is this point and this point. That is why this is a small peaks. Again, these two point, these two, these peaks, and there is these two points. That means these peaks. That means try to maintain your uh, means order. If you will start from this point, then the next point will be ended here. Again, suppose you will start from this point as the starting point. Next will be this point. So in this way, we will form the triggering. That means the gate pulse for the switch S1. So now for the second switch, sorry, not the sec second switch means that I'm talking about the switch number four or the gate pulse is G4. Then we should follow this waveform. Okay. Again, in this waveform, where the coincides point with respect to the carrier signal or rectangular shape signal. So first is this point and this point. That is why we have taken this is the pulse. Second is these two point. That is why this point. And similarly, again, it has coincide on this particular two points. So it will be this one. Similarly, again, go through this part. That means these two points are there. That is why this point and this point is there. That is why it will be the next peak. Again, it will start from this point and here it will end it. That means the peak is this one. Similarly, we can draw the other peaks in this similar way. Okay. So ultimately, we will get the two triggering pulse across the switch S1 and switch S4. Now, as we know, the output voltage that depends on that is Vs into G1 minus G4. That means we are going to we are going to make this kind of possibilities means G1 minus G4. That means what? This part minus this one. So in this, think about this particular region. In this region, the peak is this one, but no peak is there. That means G1 minus G4, which will give you this is the peak. Again, G1, the peak is this one, and for G4, the peak is this one. That means this part minus this part which will give you 0 as the amplitude of the peak and the width of the peak are same for G1 and G4. Similarly, again you can think about this part and this part then G1 minus G4 is this one. So in this way you can go through the positive half cycle and we will get this kind of peaks. They are almost symmetrical to each other. Okay. After Pi, what happened? Again, we will do that is G1 minus G4. That means this is the G1 and this is G4. So in this particular peak C, this part, right, and this part are same. That is why it will give you 0. But C, in this case, there is a 0 next part. But here the peak is this one. That means what? That means as we know that is G1 minus G4. That means 0 minus this one. So it will give you this peak. So the peak is maintaining in negative cycle. And in opposite direction with respect to the previous one. Clear? So similarly and through the same way we can say now if this is G1. And this is suppose G4. So that means this part is negative. This is. And this part reflected on the negative part. And these two are maintained 0. Again. So go through the next half cycle. 
so you will get this kind of means pulse for the for triggering the gate pulse so triggering the gate of the respective switches so see in this particular case as we are using the bidirectional carrier signal okay S suppose when the g1 stops working then the g4 starts working if there is any delay which is inputted due to some uneven condition then if g1 starts working then on this particular instant suppose g1 as is in on state that means immediately then g1 and g4 will be short circuited okay so to avoid it we can use this kind of signal also okay that means and as well as we can avoid the number of signals in the first case as we are implemented the number of the carrier signal is bidirectional in nature that is why we should we should be implemented the bidirectional means sine wave also See, if we can produce this is a kind of uh, carrier signal maybe this is suppose in the this can be implemented for the forward direction and it is supposed implemented for the reverse direction or negative direction then automatically we can apply only one sine wave over here that is why we can minimize the number of sine wave okay so this is another pattern anyways this is anyways but now we are going to calculate that is so from this above discussion we can conclude that is instead of maintaining the width of the all pulses the same as the case of the multiple pulse width modulation that i had discussed in the previous section the width of the each pulses is varied in protection of the amplitude of the sine wave the getting signal are generated by comparing of the sinusoidal reference signal with a triangular carrier signal of the frequency of fc the frequency of the reference signal fr determines the inverter output voltage frequency that is f0 and its peak amplitude ar controls the modulation index which is defined by m and then in turn of the rms output voltage v0 comparing the bidirectional carrier signal vcr with and the next section will be repeated for the next sheet here see that means the sinus that means we can say two sinusoidal reference signal vr and minus vr this produces the getting pulse that is g1 and g4 however g1 and g4 can be generated at the same time then the number of pulses per cycle depends on the carrier frequency within this constraint within this constraint then the two switches may be on in the same same instant then s1 and s4 then can be conducted at the same time the same getting signal can be generated by using unidirectional rectangle in unidirectional and triangular carrier wave just i have discussed before so this is the conclusion part okay that is why and now if we are trying to maintain the uniformly pulse width in case of the getting pulse then the sine wave can be replaced by triangular shaped wave form that is reference signal then the every coincide point will be remaining same then it will produces the same amount of width of the pulses the appropriate g1 and g4 that means what i have discussed so many things just keep it in your mind if we are using the sinusoidal then as well as in the sinusoidal wave for the reference signal then we should implement the carrier signal that is repeated repetitive triangular wave form and which is bipolar okay so in this particular case we are using two sinusoidal wave suppose we required one sinusoidal wave then what happen then we can change the wave form like this one then the carrier signal wave form can be changed then we are not using the 
bipolar carrier signal here we are using the unipolar carrier signal for this one and for this one that means we can avoid the other ref other reference signal other sine wave okay so this is the one advantage for using this kind of carrier signal different one maybe in case of the sine wave on depending on the amplitude of the sine wave the pulse width can be changed right so maybe a tendency to make somehow any delay can be inputted for some abnormal cases during operation of the inverter then g1 and g4 means the switch s1 and s4 can be short circuited by each other okay to avoid it to provide the appropriate width of the pulse to the gate or to the appropriate switch we can replace the sine wave by the rectangular reference signal okay so this is the conclusion part now go to the calculation of rms value this is well defined by here that is vrms equal to vs into summation of this one that means what here the vs into m equal to which is m means that is mth means the mth order so it is clear to it is clear to implement this myth implement this method and is preferably okay and so it is clear to implement this method and preferable that means i'm talking about the previous section now see the algorithm for generating the getting signal is similar to that for the unipolar pwm except the reference signal is sine wave that is vr equal to capital vr sine omega t instead of dc signal to output voltage is v0 equal to vs into g1 minus g4 so just i told you before this one this is a previous previous section just i discussed you before the few minutes back now see if delta m is the width of the mth pulse so rms output voltage can be written as vrms this one that means delta m is the width of the mth pulse okay suppose we consider the any pulse for the mth mth uh, means uh, um, mth number then we know if the pulse is suppose this one and this is the width is suppose delta m which is uh, depicted on the waveform see here we mention the pulse width that is suppose delta m okay i don't know what is the width of the pulse so assume this is the mth number of pulse mth number this is defined by m it can be happened for this one it can be happened for this one that is why this is the mth number of pulse which is having the width of that is delta m so this is only defined by the expression this one okay that means mth if, if m equal that can be continued from the first pulse to onward that is m equal to 1 to 2p why the term stands for 2p 2p means that is num p means the number of pulse okay in one half cycle so if we consider total period that is defined by the two half cycle that is 0 to pi 0 to t by 2 and t by 2 to t that means what the number of peaks is actually double for the first half cycle and for the second half cycle that is defined by 2p so the rms value is defined by vs into m equal to 1 to 2p means any number of peaks we can assume or pulse we can assume and the width of the part is that is delta m by pi that is under root so this is the calculation for the rms value okay where this RMS value had calculated for the multiple pulse width modulation. So the similar approach already I have discussed here. So this is all about for the sinusoidal pulse width modulation. It's a very important topic. Okay, please go through the topic. So thank you students.